Steve Bartholomew here at Dominator Athletics. I'm down in my lair where I produce my indoor shots and throwing weights. Uh, what you see in front of you right now is my own personal uh, Pro Series Tungsten 35 pound throwing weight. Now this is my demo weight that I would throw in meets all over the country. Uh, this exact ball was used uh, to throw several hundred uh, you know, 20, 20, 21 meter plus throws, including uh, Libor Charfre tag actually threw it uh, over 24 meters in uh, 2011 at, at Finley for the farthest throw in the world that year. So it's seen a decent amount of abuse. Uh, you can tell the ball is pretty scuffed up. It's, uh, you know, the color of the different landing areas that it's landed on. Um, it's been through, you know, probably a hundred hard cage impacts. Uh, you know, so it's, it's definitely been abused. So... Uh, what I'm going to do today is going to make most people cringe. I'm going to take this box cutter, uh, heat it up with my heat gun here, and I'm going to jam this box cutter right in the top of this ball. And my reason for doing that is uh, I want to show you guys how to repair uh, old throwing weights that have been cracked or punctured or you know otherwise just had damage done to them. So if you have a, a small crack or a puncture in your ball, you do not need to buy uh, a brand new replacement ball. Say, you know, if it's if it's small enough, you can actually repair it yourself and get a lot more useful life out of the things. You know, when I started out, uh, when I started out throwing, you know, years and years ago, uh, this is uh, probably two years before I started my business. I came up with these techniques that I'm going to show you. Uh, I was sick of the whole uh, duct tape and you know epoxy method or shooting it full of caulk or whatever. You know, people have tried lots of different things. Uh, the only way to fix a ball is a uh, crack in the ball is to physically bond the plastic in the crack together and close the hole. You can't fill it with anything. You can't cover it with anything. It's not going to work. So, what I'm going to show you, um, if you can master the technique, which is you know fairly simple, anybody can do it. Uh, it should save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the, you know, even thousands of dollars over the next few years if you have broken broken weights laying around like everybody does. Uh, I do have to preface all this by saying that uh, it will only work on hard shell balls. It will not work on soft shell. So the old, I uh, uh, don't want to mention any manufacturer's names, even though everyone knows who, who all the manufacturers are, but any, any soft shell ball this will not work on has to be a hard shell ball. So extremely old soft shells, uh, don't bother trying. Uh, it's got to be a hard shell to do what I'm about to do. Um, but yeah, it should should work for just about everybody's shells. And so what I'm doing right now, I have a, my trusty Chicago electric heat gun available at Harbor Freight. I think I paid seven dollars for this thing. And this thing gets up to 1,500 degrees, I think. It might be 1,500 watts. I don't remember, but I'm just heating up the top of this ball until it gets shiny, or at least soft. So you can see the ball's kind of shiny on top, so it's going to be, actually it's very hot. You can see I left a, see I left a thumbprint in it. I'll take my box cutter here, and just jam that down in there. I might have to put the camera down for a second. Alright. That is what it looks like to have a, a box cutter sticking out of a $2,200 throwing weight. And not uh, not a visual trick or anything. Pulled it out. You can see I've got a nice split right there. In fact, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna widen that out, and I'm gonna actually pour some tungsten out of this thing and show you that it's a uh, you know a pretty good sized hole. So bear with me a minute. So we're back, and I've been carving away at this thing, and I just put a big old gash in the top of that thing. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus better, but you can see deep, you know, deep down in there inside of the ball. Uh, I'm not going to pour any tungsten out of it. It'll, it'll flow right out of there. You can see it's a big, a big hole. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that hole up. Uh, it'll be like magic. So, like I said, this is a tactic that you can use to save yourselves a lot of money. So, things you're going to need here are packing tape. we got a little bit left in the roll. Uh, something metal like a spatula or... I'm, I'm just going to use the end of my box cutter here because i got it right here. And the heat gun again. 
So I apologize if you can't hear me over the heat gun, but basically what I'm going to be doing is heating this thing up till it is much, much hotter than it was before. It's going to be liquidy, uh, very, very soft, and I'm going to use the box cutter to uh, kind of slather the plastic back together. So here we go. Now it's actually smart to, uh, to not just keep holding the gun on it. You know, you can heat it up for a while and then take it off. And that's going to allow the heat, that's going to allow the heat uh, to work its way from the outside to the inside. That way you're not just heating up only the outside of it. Um, so you need to heat it fairly gradually. It takes uh, several hundred degrees to, to get this plastic to be more malleable. Uh, heat it up again. And you also don't want to heat up a huge area. You want to heat up as little as you can because you will distort the ball, too. Uh, there's so much weight, so much pressure on the inside of this thing that if you were to just heat up the whole ball, it would just totally flatten itself under its own weight. But this thing uh, is starting to really smell like plastic right now. You can tell it's much, much shinier. Might be, might be soft enough. That gap has actually already started to close by itself. Ooh, yeah, here we go. You know, I'm, i got to apologize. I'm not looking at the camera right now. I'm looking at my hand, so I don't know what's going on. But you can see I'm kind of smashing, uh, smashing this gap closed. You know, it's not pretty. I'm just kind of slathering it, you know, slathering it on top of itself. very very hot so I don't want to touch it too much with my hand but pretty much you just push push it over itself and then pull it back over itself and just keep just keep on doing that I'm use my hand to flatten it out a little bit and this plastic is going to stay it's going to stay soft for a long time it actually probably take almost a full hour for this to cool down. But you can see I'm pushing pushing in very easily on that. This shell, I can normally run over one of these shells uh, with a semi truck and it won't it won't really compress. This I could stick my finger right in there. And sometimes if I want to get a nice nice smooth finish on the outside, you know, I'll heat this thing back up again. Shouldn't take as much this time. And I will, I'm going to have to set the camera down here, but what I'm doing is I'm going to put some packing tape over the top of the ball. Uh, two or three layers is usually good. And then I'm going to roll, just a tape roll, you know, an old cardboard roll or something over the top of it and you're using that packing tape to distribute distribute the force a little bit and that'll take little crinkles and creases and stuff out of the plastic little imperfections and ideally you want to leave leave this tape on here for a long long time till it cools down because if it's too hot you can actually rip rip plastic off with the tape but yeah I'm starting to pull a little bit of plastic up but yeah it's still still too early let that cool for another couple seconds here um, I mean ideally you want to let this sit for 20 minutes or so before you pull the tape off but there I pulled it off a little more quickly yeah I lifted lifted some of the plastic there but either way it's a very 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 smooth other than this little little thing that kind of filleted up but otherwise when this thing cools down I could throw this for a whole another year it wouldn't be a problem so I'm gonna heat up that that little spot again just kinda just kinda put it down with my thumb I 
Now I'm doing this all in real time, so it should be. You can see how that just changed color just that fast. But and there we go. I just fixed a probably one inch long by quarter inch wide gash and a twenty-two hundred dollar throwing weight. So you know, use you know, feel free to try this. You know, all it's going to cost you is seven or eight dollars for a cheap heat gun. Uh, I've tried it with a propane torch, you know, a torch like this, um, but it heats up the plastic too quickly, you end up burning it, and yeah, this thing's already starting to, to harden up. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, all you need is a heat gun, uh, maybe some packing tape and something metal, and you might be able to get some more useful life out of your practice weights. So really, that's about it. Um, you know, if it's a split, it's the same thing. If it's a gash, you know, you have to be a little bit more creative. Um, you know, if you're if you have just a big hole in it. But usually, you know, if, if you've pushed a piece of plastic down in, you can pry it back up with something and and then you know slather it around. But I think this is definitely a worthwhile tactic on uh, you know to try to fix your own throwing weights. If it's a if it's a crack in a shot. You know, you definitely have to use the tape technique and smooth it out a little better than what I did here. But granted, I did this in 10 minutes. And, you know, if I was spending a little bit more time on it, I could actually make this look like uh, look like a brand new ball. You know, excluding all the dirt and other stuff that's on it. I probably should have cleaned this first. But anyways, I hope this helps everybody. And, you know, good luck fixing your old, your old throwing implements.